How's it going, guys? I'm Connor from Running Warehouse, and I'm here with Elliot Heath, product manager at Nike. And today we are going to be taking a deep dive into the latest iteration of the Marathon Super Shoe that started it all. We've got the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 3. Now, Elliot, a lot I want to talk to you about this shoe. And I think the perfect place to start this conversation is to head back to 2017, where it all started. We saw athletes like Elliot Kipchoge doing things in the marathon that we never thought possible. And over the years, the shoe made small modifications, tweaks to get to the final version that we have here. Can you tell us a little bit about the early days of the Vaporfly and uh, how it progressed into Vaporfly Next Percent 3? Yeah, thanks, Connor. Thanks for having me. Um, it's always a fun time to get on and talk, talk Vaporfly and racing shoes with you. Uh, in terms of the Vaporfly, this is... Yeah, it's come a long way since its start. Um, I think you mentioned it as you know the ultimate racing shoe. We kind of think of it as the super, super shoe where we're at now. But um, yeah, when we started out and the Vaporfly being built for the marathon and that breaking two project, that was something completely new, revolutionary, taking you know footwear and all of our athletes to a new level. I think what's one of the big unlocks and steps forward here with what we've learned over the last handful of years to where we are now is the Vaporfly is really the most versatile racing shoe that you'll see in the market. So it's no longer just that marathon shoe. I think our team's focused on still making it a great marathon shoe, but we've seen from the results and the way our athletes are using it, the testing is just the versatility from, you know, a 10K or even some of these, these shorter, shorter road races all the way to the marathon. It's the racing shoe that you can rock up to the starting line and be super confident regardless of what the distance is. So we've learned a lot over time. There's been little iterations and little improvements, uh, but there's still some components of what makes the Vaporfly the Vaporfly, but a lot of new exciting things to talk about with this new version as well. Yeah, when you see the starting lines of most races, again, from 5K to Marathon, a lot of the times you are seeing Vaporfly, and that just goes to show how versatile the shoe is. And while this is a completely new shoe from top to bottom, it still maintains a lot of those core philosophies that the Vaporfly is known for. But when you take a look at the shoe, the, the one thing that stands out to me and really the part of the shoe that everyone is going to be talking about with the Super Shoe is going to be the foam. And of course, we've got Zoom X in the shoe from uh, heel to forefoot, a lot of it. Do we still have, though, the same Zoom X compound that you've seen in past versions? Is this still going to have the same underfoot experience and really that same cushioned, bouncy feel you've come to know and love. Yeah, as you mentioned, one of the things that makes Vaporfly Vaporfly is kind of the engine that it's built on and making that up is the full length Zoom X foam along with the, the curved carbon fiber fly plate. And specifically to your question about the Zoom X foam, that is the same compound as what we've had before. We've just gotten a little bit smarter in every little process around how the foam is made, how we're manufacturing it, how we're making that into shoes um, so that it's the same material, but we're actually eking out just a little bit better performance out of, out of the foam. Uh, but it's the same compound. It's what you can trust and what Vaporfly runners have felt before. And we just continue to get a little bit smarter with how we're building the shoes and utilizing all the components. All right. Another part of the shoe that stood out to me when you look at it at first glance is going to be these cutouts and then when you go over to the medial side, there's almost these uh, carved out convex and concave shapes. Can you tell us about what went into the, de the design process for this and how it's going to affect performance? Yeah, so you mentioned those cutouts and that's really a reductive nature. Everything focused on, again, where can we carve away weight that's not needed? Everything that's built into the shoe is about the performance giving runners as much benefit as possible. Those two areas, one on the side of the shoe and, and underneath as well, where you look in and it cuts away to the to the plate, those are both areas in which you can, uh, we, we looked at trying to carve away material uh, really in a more reductive sense, still still keeping all of the things that keep the sh make the shoe special and give give it its performance, but cutting away material where, where we could. Um, you mentioned on the, the medial side of the shoe, the convex geometry, uh, that's a really important part. So it's a it's kind of a bulge out, a very subtle change uh, from previous vapor flies where there was a little bit of a concave geometry cutting in there. 
Um, that's one of the biggest unlocks of this shoe is a very subtle improvement to the stability feeling of it, uh, especially as you kind of roll in and get a little bit more control over the pronation that you're running with in the forefoot of the shoe. So that subtle change to convex geometry on the medial side really helps with a more stable feeling shoe. Yeah, you know, creating a stable shoe is extremely important, especially as you get higher and higher. That's really uh, important with the super shoes is creating that highly cushioned protective experience. But now with World Athletics limits at 40 millimeters, there are constraints. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the challenges of creating a shoe with these limits and how you maximize performance given these rules? Yeah, as you mentioned, it's definitely a different world in which we're playing now with, with limits. Um, but in the past, there, there were no limits. When the first Vaporfly came out, you know, there were no limits to it. And so um, I think building on that, it's like, like we, at the time, it, there was opportunity to go higher. I think the way we look at it is that stack height is, is not the only thing that is an input to the shoe. Um, so although they've set those, those rules, it, it does put some limitations on how we can build our shoes for racing. But in the case of the Vaporfly, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's significantly below, or it's definitely below the, the 40 millimeter stack height limit. And it's in a zone where when we really start to talk about the versatility of the shoe, um, keeping it lightweight, but still maximizing how much energy runners want and demand for all those different races, uh, stack height isn't really the only thing that we're talking about. We're still trying to maximize all those other variables and really create the perfect shoe that's the blend of energy return, propulsion, protection, as well as that stack height. But the stack height is really kind of an outcome of hitting all those other metrics really well. Yeah, you know, the super foams are an extremely important part of super shoes. It's really what gets all the hype. But another key element that plays together with that super foam is going to be the carbon fiber plate. It's what creates that stability. It almost stabilizes that low durometer foam. It creates the rigidity. But I'm sure you guys have learned quite a bit since that original Vaporfly. Do we have any modifications in this plate given what athletes have tested, uh, the feedback they've been given, or does that original plate really maintain uh, the core philosophies that the Vaporfly is known for? Yeah, so the Vaporfly Next% 3 is built on the exact same carbon fiber fly plate as the original Vaporfly. So that's gonna be, add some of that consistent feeling. It's really what gives the shoe its propulsive feel. Uh, we've got some great cushion shoes with just Zoom X and not a plate. Um, and that, that delivers great cushioning, uh, a lot of energy return, but it doesn't quite give the same propulsive feel. So the propulsive feel is really what is unlocked by that carbon fiber fly plate. Even though, like, as you mentioned though, it's it's working in combination with the midsole foam. And so even though the plate is exactly the same, it's how it's built around with those other components of the outsole and then the midsole, the Zoom X around it to ultimately deliver what the final experience is of the shoe. So really the combination in the Vaporfly Next% 3 gives you very similar propulsive feel, but the redesign and especially some of the the slight changes to how the foam is built around the plate unlocks a little bit more energy return and a slightly different feel to the shoe. Yeah. Well, we've talked a lot about the foam and the plate, but I think one uh, element that is often overlooked is just the overall geometries of the shoe. When we take a look at shoes like the Alpha Fly and the Vaporfly that live side by side, they are going to be a little bit different. And I've been talking with runners asking which shoe is going to be best for me. And I think there's no correct answer there. Everyone has a different gait. Everyone has a different stride. Everyone has different cadence. And I think really trying both shoes and finding what works best for you oftentimes can be uh, what you need to do. But now looking at the Vaporfly, can you tell us a little bit about the geometries that we've seen used here? Is it very similar to past versions? And even telling us a little bit about this heel that does look aesthetically different than the past version. Yeah, sure. I mean, for us, the way we're approaching it again is the whole this whole journey for Super Shoes started off with the with the Vaporfly, and that was kind of the original the original Super Shoe, if you if you will. And that at the time it was kind of the only one. And we've learned so much over time from the testing of the Vaporfly, but then also with the introduction of our other shoes as well, getting sharper on what are the needs for the really short and the really long distances. And so for us, it's not so much a matter of 
what's a better shoe for me, Vaporfly or Alphafly? It really comes down to what's the best use case. Uh, we continue to put a lot of you know, research and testing into how the shoes all work for their different distances, but really build the Alpha Fly to be that ultimate marathon shoe. If you get a little bit more focused on those longer distances where cushion is more priority, really saving and protecting the legs for deeper into the race and being super efficient over a long time, that's where the Alpha Fly is, is really built to be that long distance shoe. The Vaporfly is the perfect blend of everything. It's the perfect blend of speed and propulsion, but also that protection that will take you all the way to the marathon. So I think runners that really like the feeling of something super smooth, something that they can change paces in really fast, they can go fast or settle into a pace for a long period of time. Those runners are going to like the Vaporfly, but it's not necessarily, it's a Vaporfly or an Alpha Fly or a Street Fly. Those, all those shoes are really built for specific use cases when we look at all of them. Uh, when you talk about the geometry of the shoe, like I said, everything was about, we looked at some areas, we're trying to be as reductive as possible and, and save some weight and also come up with kind of the new the new design and the look and feel of, of, of fast. And when you look at this, this shoe, everything about it is built to really tell the eye, tell the mind that I'm about, I'm ready to go fast. And from, you know, even just like the colorway, the swoosh, uh, and every component to the design of the shoe is is built to really turn the turn the mind on and get you ready to go fast. All right, Elliot, you've dug into pretty much every part of this midsole, and there's only one more part I want to talk about, and this is going to be exclusive to the proto colorway I have here. This is going to be extremely limited edition, so not everyone is going to be able to get their hands on the proto colorway, but if you are one of the lucky few that does, you'll notice this uh, number sequence on the medial heel. Now, we talked on the Shriek Fly about the number, and I believe it was a tester that put a lot of work, had great feedback, and really helped the Shriek Fly become what it was. And if I remember correctly, that's, uh, that tester's number was 17539-9. Now, when we look here, this is not the same number here on the Vaporfly. Can you tell us about this number? Well, I hate, I hate to reduce our testers to a number uh, because there's so much more, but I think what it is is really just a nod to, in the proto color way, it's, it's a recognition of, you know, these are us trying to get our, our, the first pairs of, of shoes out that we can um, in a world in which, you know, the rules require shoes to get out to the, um, get out and be sold before the shoes are legal. And in our, in our best attempt to really stick with the spirit of the rules and, and make sure that we're leading the way there, we always try to get the shoes out as quickly as we can. And in the proto colorway, these are the, sh the first pairs that we can we can get to market. And specifically when, when you call out the number there on the midsole, that's really a nod to our testers, the athletes, uh, professional, um, you know, local, national level, as well as uh, really all levels that we tested with the shoe. We couldn't make these shoes without our testers. And I think it's just a nod to the voice of the athlete. The input of athletes is at the center of everything we do. We have all these ideas that sometimes are come up with in the lab, um, but they're never validated until the testers work with us. And we're pretty proud that, you know, as a final shoe, this, this Vaporfine X% 3 is really a breakthrough in technology and it's taking, you know, super shoes to the next level. But it's also a call out to when we go to our testers to test with them right away, it's not always a beautiful product. You know, they put a lot of trust in us to try new things. We know that it's a journey for them in terms of their training and their racing, that they're putting trust in us and they're putting faith in trying to bring innovation forward for, for Nike and for runners everywhere. And so it's really just a nod to them and all of the testers, but in this case, one specific one that, that put in a lot of really good miles, a lot of, a lot of races and gave a lot of, of meaningful feedback that, that influenced the shoe. Yeah. Well, moving on down to the outsole, you know, the midsole gets all the love, gets all the hype, but the outsole is an important uh, factor of the shoe. And you're always balancing, keeping the shoe as light as possible taking out as much rubber as possible, but also delivering the traction and durability needed to go the marathon distance and hopefully a few marathons. Can you tell us about the outsole design here and how it's a little bit different from that last version? 
Yeah, you're exactly right. The you know, you're, it's always a balance of trying to get the right durability and traction, but also keep the weight very minimized. In this case, it really is an impactful unlock for us, this new outsole material. We're using less outsole material while still getting the same amount of overall durability and really great traction. And what less outsole material allows for is it allows for more Zoom X. So we're trading off a couple millimeters of outsole material uh, lessening that and then that allows us to add in two more millimeters of zoom X in the forefoot of the shoe uh, so the same overall stack height but two more millimeters of zoom X which ultimately leads to this vaporfly being the, the the vaporfly that delivers the most energy return of any vaporfly that we've ever made so the outsole the outsole unlocks a lot of other things for the shoe specifically in terms of the midsole design Another comment on outsole, and I feel like this is something that I've been hearing a lot more recently, especially with shoes trying to become even more inherently stable, is wider net bases. And when we take a look at shoes like the Alpha Fly, they will have a little bit more uh, wider net base than maybe what you see here in the Vaporfly. Do we still maintain a very similar net base to those previous versions, or has it changed at all with inherent stability in mind? Yeah, so the, the net base of the Vaporfly X% 3 is the same width as the, the Vaporfly X% 2 and 1. Uh, one slight change is that actually it's shifted just a couple millimeters from the lateral side to the medial side. Uh, that, along with that convex geometry on the medial side, is one of the key unlocks to giving a more stable feel to the shoe. Again, as you get later into races and the form breaks down, that's a really key component. And that's part of not only a performance thing, but it's, it's part of one of those things that helps, you know, keep runners feeling, feeling really stable and feeling healthier uh, in, in not only in the race, but in their training. All right. Well, finishing this shoe off, wrapping it all together, we've got the new upper. And if we take a step back to that OG Vaporfly, I remember we had a very simple engineered mesh design. Then it transitioned to the fly knit. Then it transitioned back to an engineered mesh, and we had a couple versions of that. Now looking at the Vaporfly Next% 3, we're back to flying it, and taking a closer look, it almost has a different uh, look and feel than what I've ever seen with flying it. Can you tell us why you decided to make the transition back to flying it and how it's gonna enhance performance uh, and deliver a better experience than that engineered mesh design? Yeah, I think what you described there is a great example of, for us, it's all about deliver. how can we deliver the best benefit and the best performance to our athletes? It's not about picking a material and then making that work. It's about figuring out what, what materials, what sort of new innovation do we have at our disposal? Um, and so each step along the line, when you go back to the very first Vaporfly and every step from there, the next upper material that we came out with was the best that we had at the time. And this new upper affinite is really an example of all of those learnings in those different materials of certainly, you know, we learned things from going from the original engineered mesh to affinite, which um, had some benefits in terms of comfort and fit, but, you know, it took on a lot of water. It was a little bit heavy. And you looking back to the Boston Marathon in 2018 and athletes running in those sort of conditions, uh, you know, you don't want a shoe to get too heavy over time. So then came the vapor weave material, which was very, very light, but didn't take on, it took on only 7% of the water of, of what the Flyknit shoe did. And then if you went to the next one after that, it was kind of learning from both of those shoes prior and ultimately landing here where with this new Flyknit upper, we've learned from all those things. We've tried to keep a minimum to the water retention. We've tried to really what the Flyknit does is it unlocks these different zones where we can engineer every single part of the upper to get these different zones where, where, where we want to prioritize breathability, we can do that. Where we want to prioritize containment, we can do that. Where we want to prioritize fit, we can do that. So that's one of the general unlocks that Flyknit allows us is this ultimate engineerability. But we've also learned from all these other materials, Flyknit or other, that we've used leading up to this point. So. This fly net that we're talking about here, we went through 57 iterations of it. And I think you'll see that on the back of the shoe where um, our knit team is just incredible in the way that they're able to iterate, take athlete feedback, 
turn things around that day or even the next day and we're you know we're pushing on to another version so uh, the team's really proud of all of the learnings that we've taken from previous uppers and then those 57 different versions to land in this in a place with a really lightweight super containing but also breathable in the right zones in this upper yeah, well, you know, Elliot, I'm so excited. We finally have the Vaporfly Next% 3. It's a shoe that I've been waiting for for a very long time. And I think going back to your comment on versatility of the Vaporfly, it's a shoe that I've used in everything from 5K upwards of half marathon. If I ran a marathon, I would for sure use it for that as well. And I think it's just a shoe that is fast, it's bouncy. And again, this was the shoe that started it all. This was the original Zoom X racer. We've seen records go down in it. And I think now looking at version three, we've seen small changes, but overall, once we get, you know, with how good super shoes have got, you're just gonna have small incremental changes. But I think now with version three, uh, we might just have the fastest Vaporfly to date. Yeah, I mean, I think the way our team approached it was really in this world where it seems like there's a lot of super shoes. We actually feel like this is the super, super shoe of that of that market. And the reason for that is just those three components of we focused on really providing runners with a more stable feeling shoe. We focused on delivering uh, a much lighter Vaporfly. So this Vaporfly is about 5% lighter than what the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 was. And then lastly, when it comes down to super shoes in general, a lot of it is about energy return and efficiency. And this Vaporfly is, gives the highest amount of energy return of any Vaporfly ever. And so those three things kind of come together to really produce what we were excited about as, as the, the super, super shoe, the one that really pushes Vaporfly forward. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited to try on and test out the super, super shoe. I finally have my pair to get in the miles, to get racing, to set some PRs. And for the people at home, for the listeners who are also excited to try the Vaporfly out for themselves, the good news is it'll be available very soon. I believe you'll be able to get the first uh, batch on April 1st here at Running Warehouse. And if you miss out on that first batch, there's going to be more colorways coming throughout the year. Uh, you know, overall, Elliot, I think the Vaporfly 3 looks amazing, but I'm just really excited for super shoes in general and to see how much further uh, Nike can continue to push the boundaries uh, and deliver even more performance for the athletes. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for you and everyone else to get out there and try it.